was it was oh, cool. Oh, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you can be seated. John and Big Nash, if you could be seated. Yeah, I'm not afraid to publicly shame people. So welcome everybody to the ninth annual Bike Summit organized by Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition. Um, my name is Shiloh Ballard. I um, am the executive director of the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition. And thank you all for being here. So um, we are here in the very beautiful city of Mountain View in this magnificent space. And to welcome us here is a very special person, the mayor of Mountain View, Lisa Matichek. And for those of you who don't know the mayor, um, she's in her third year at, uh, on the city council, and this year she is mayor. Um, she also, before becoming a city council member and mayor, spent seven years on the planning commission, and in that capacity reviewed four uh, precise plans. And I know we have a lot of city folks in the room, so you understand when I say to be a planning commissioner, that is like a saintly thing in terms of public servanthood. I mean, as a planning commissioner, people come and they yell at you and they boo because you're making votes that they don't like and you don't get all the fame and glory, the tremendous fame and glory that you get from being a city council member. Right. So thank you, Mayor Matichek, for your public service and for uh, welcoming us here today. <laughs> Those were interesting comments. <laughs> yeah, the planning commission was very interesting, but city council was even more interesting. Uh, but thank you very much for the introduction and welcome everyone to Mountain View. Um, it's really nice to have you all here. Um, I'm sure you know a lot about Mountain View. We have a fabulous economy here, um, but it's also just a great place to be, to live, to work, to enjoy. Um, and that's why it's really great to have you all here for the ninth uh, annual Silicon Valley Bike Summit. And uh, we're here in our new community center. And I personally think it's an absolutely wonderful facility. This room could not be any better. And I was saying earlier, I absolutely love the view that we have of the park and the trees, but today, I gotta tell you, I was more excited to see uh, an addition to the view, which is all of the bikes that are here. Yeah. 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 I am happy to see so many bicycles here, so congratulations to all of you who got here via your bicycle. Um, we're also thrilled to be partnering with the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition and Google on a pop-up protected bikeway on California. I don't know if any of you had a chance to see that yet. <laughs> and tonight, in keeping with the theme of the day, we are having a bike-themed Thursday Night Live. And if you haven't been to Thursday Night Live before, this is put on by the city's recreation staff. And tonight is our fourth in a series of seven. And what we do is we close Castro between um, Evelyn and California, so people can walk on Castro. We have a band with a um, great area for dancing. And we also have a bunch of tables of information from community organizations and nonprofits, a um, little farmer's market, all kinds of wonderful things uh, to get the community together. But it's exciting that tonight is the bike themed one. So we'll have um, things for kids to do related to bikes, um, information from organizations that are associated with bikes, vendors. So um, I'm sure you're all gonna be there tonight. And I'll expect to see you all dancing. This music is always great. I'm not sure if the music is bike themed, but uh, we'll see what we do. <laughs> Uh, for Mountain View, uh, getting people on bikes and out of their cars is something that we've been working on for quite some time. Uh, we know that's very important uh, for many reasons. Uh, it will help reduce congestion on our road, but I think more importantly, it helps with the environment. Uh, we need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and since vehicles are the primary contributor, getting people on bikes to get around is really important. 
Um, so it, it's nice to see so many people interested in accomplishing that. And again, I thank you all for the number of people who rode their bikes here today. Um, we do have a great environment here in the Bay Area for uh, riding the bikes. So it seems like we should be able to accomplish more. Uh, and we certainly have a lot of activities going on to try to do that. We're working on several complete streets projects here in the city, and we've got quite a few folks from the city here, so you can find out more about that um, from them. We've got the El Camino streetscape plan, where we are planning on having bike lanes on both sides and removing the street parking. It was nice to see that actually that street parking can be removed and have very little impact on the community but more importantly, when you have those bike lanes on El Camino, it'll make it safer for the folks riding bicycles. So uh, it, won't, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> there's one thing I've learned in my, I guess it would be now 10 years in city government, uh, nothing moves quickly. <laughs> but we've got the plans and we're working on them. Uh, we're also working on the reversible bus, uh, reversible transit lane on Shoreline. And as part of that, there will be protected bike lanes on either side for part of Shoreline. We need to get people, <laughs> we need to get people in and out of North Bay Shore uh, on bikes or also pedestrians. So we've got quite a few plans to make that, to try to make the environment better to make that happen. Uh, we also have a lot of improvements that we're planning on as we redesign and rebuild our transit center. So better access for pedestrians and bicyclists, as well as, um, you know, the other thing we're trying to do is have more public transportation. So better access for the shuttles and the buses um, to try to encourage people to take anything but a single occupancy vehicle. But that's a tough one to do. Um, so anyway, enough about Mountain View. I really do thank you all for being here today. I know you're gonna enjoy the summit. And again, I'll see you all tonight at Thursday Night Live. I'll turn this back over to Shiloh. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mavichek, and again, thank you for your public service. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. It's the ninth annual Silicon Valley Bike Summit organized by Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition. Uh, we actually sold out this year, so yeah, yeah. 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 there is in bicycling, and also a warning because next year be sure to buy your ticket early, or you might not get in. Um, yeah. Although we are pretty nice, we still let folks in. Um, so next year, register early. Um, I like to start with one of all of our favorite questions, and that is, how many of us rode our bikes here today? <laughs> Look at that. Look around the room. Is, doesn't that just make your heart sing? Wouldn't it be wonderful if yeah. every time we asked that question in a gathering, that many hands went up? Now I'm going to ask the people who didn't ride their bikes to raise their hands and stand up. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, I want to point that out because also I too rode my bike here from San Jose and I have a wonderful listening about me, and I have a wonderful fragrance about me, um, and, and we welcome that. We are inclusive here. This is us. And so I also want to mention we have a gender neutral bathroom in the main lobby area. Is that correct, Emmett? The yeah. lobby area? So, um, Moving on, uh, I want to thank our, again, our host, Mountain View, the city of Mountain View, and our sponsors. Uh, mainly, I want to highlight Jump as our title sponsor, and there's some toys to play with outside if you haven't already seen the pretty red bikes. Um, and then also our classic sponsors, the city of Cupertino, Peninsula Open Space Trust, Waymo, and Lyft. And then uh, more of our sponsors are up on the screen. So thank you all to our sponsors. Um, with that said, I'm actually gonna transition to a more sobering note, uh, because we would be remiss if we did not do that, given the fact that in the past month, in the city of San Jose, we unfortunately had two fatality, bike fatalities within two weeks, two separate incidents. And that's just not okay. So 
not okay for people to be dying on our streets. 40,000 people annually die on our streets. And this is just regardless of whether you're in a car, your feet, or peddling. And that's not even, that figure doesn't even take into consideration the fact that many more people are severely injured on the streets. And also the financial impact when something like that happens. And I suspect, I think most of us suspect in this room, that most people don't actually know that our streets are some of the most dangerous places to be. And if people knew, how do you think they would react? They, I suspect they would say, it's just, it's just how it is. There's nothing we can do about it. There are accidents. And that's not true. And that's why we are here today. We have gathered all of you, some of Silicon Valley's most passionate advocates for street safety, whether you come at this issue from an environmental perspective, from a safety perspective, from a community building perspective, from a health perspective, we are here today at the ninth annual Bike Summit for all of us to learn together and learn from each other and be inspired to take the lessons back to each of our communities. So that is my sobering note, and it's hard to transition back into a positive one, but I'm gonna try to do that up here. <laughs> and I'm gonna preview the day for you. Um, so we're gonna start with a plenary discussion on Oakland's equity-centered bike plan. We'll have two time slots one before lunch and one after lunch where there's four different sessions for y'all to choose from, including a bike ride of Mountain View for each session. Um, we'll then reconvene towards the end of the day for the awards and one last session of the day. It's one of my favorites. It's when we do a Pecha Kucha style presentation, which is like super fun and fast and interactive. So uh, that should be fun. Um, and then, as you heard the mayor talk about, uh, we'll all be heading over to Mountain View's Thursday Night Live. And I want to point out again that um, Jump is out there and we have some vendors and demos, so please feel free to visit with folks and learn about uh, the various things that are out there. I also want to note, um, social media is our friend, uh, and we encourage you all to be tweeting and Facebooking during the day. There's uh, information at the center of your table on the hashtags and in the program. Each of our speakers have their Twitter handle. So it's really helpful for everybody to be tweeting so that we can get the message out beyond us here in this room. This, you know, more or less the bike choir uh, in this room we need to spread the word. So please feel free to use social media over the course of the day. There's also note cards on your table. Um, if you wanna ask a question, we'll have people come around and collect those. And then I want to ask um, our staff to uh, raise their hands, the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition staff, if they can stand up and be noticed. First and foremost, <laughs> these, these are the wonderful folks at Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition who wake up every day thinking about how we can get more people to ride bikes. <laughs> and they are the experts who work on this every day, and you guys are experts. And so over the course of the day, and they're also, they're wearing, you can tell them because we're wearing um, a hangy tag, uh, <laughs> name tag, as opposed to a stick on one. Um, I, I point them out because we want for everybody to be talking together and learning from each other and ask our, go up to SVBC staff and say, hey, I'm so-and-so and here's what I'm working on. And we hope that they will also share with you what we're working on. So please take the time to do that. And also, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the point of this kind of convening is for each of you to be building relationships and learning from each other. So please find, you know, if you're an advocate, find a city staff person. And if you're a city staff person, find an advocate and talk to each other and build relationships. If you're an elected official, 
And if you see an elected official in particular, a city council member, thank them. Because if they're here, that means that they want to champion a pro-life agenda in their city. And we need to go up to them and say, how can I help you? So please find those folks in the room um, and, and help them be able to go back to their cities and advance their pro-life agenda. That's the city council members in the room. So thank you, yes. So with that, I want to go ahead and um, bring up our, our first plenary, and I want to introduce our, mar our, our moderator, Margarita Parra. Margarita is a car-free cities lover, cycling fanatic, coffee addict, and a clumpkin. She is trained as an environmental engineer and has been working internationally in the field of sustainable transportation to reduce local pollution and global carbon emissions. Currently, she works with grid alternatives, integrating zero emissions, mobility, <coughs> and renewable energy in disadvantaged and low-income communities in California. Margarita is part of the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition Board of Directors, um, as well as she serves on the board of the Sustainable and Low Carbon Transport Partnership. In her free time, guess what Margarita likes to do? Ride, Ride bikes. <laughs> everywhere in Redwood City with her husband and their seven-year-old daughter, including biking to school in the mornings. So Margarita, come here, yay! <laughs> Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Did everybody have coffee? Yeah. I hope so. Um, so how many of you know a famous Colombian? Raise your hands. Because last weekend, a very, very, very famous Colombian <laughs> just won for the first time the Tour de France. And I know that maybe here we are advocates of biking, but I'm sure some of you are cycling fanatics like me. And for Colombians like me, seeing a Colombian cyclist win in Europe was amazing. I've been crying for three days. <laughs> and so it, it is amazing. So I'm really full of uh, happiness and really more uh, glad to be back at this summit. Uh, so grateful to be part of this community and to be with all of you who are the main advocates in our region to make sure we can bike more than people, little people, old people, young people, everybody can bike and be on the streets. So thank you for being here and I'm also grateful to be here. <coughs> the first panel is gonna be really interesting. So I want you to put your caps on if you have more, more coffee because it's going to be an opportunity to learn from one city who has been able to do an update of a bike plan in a different way. Have you heard about the new bike plan called Let's Bike Auckland? Mm. How many of you heard about it? That's few, look at that. Good. All of you after this panel are going to be experts about that bike plan. <laughs> and more importantly, you're going to learn how they did it with an equity focus. They changed the old playbook. They decided, and we have to give credit to the city and to the advocates and organizations in the community. They changed the way these plans are made. They consulted, they bring the communities, they support them, pay them for their participation, and ask them what are the barriers in your communities, in your underserved communities, in those communities who have been left out, that have, don't have the infrastructure that is needed to bring bicycles. They asked them, they consulted, and they built their plan together. So today, we're going to learn how they did it. So get your questions ready to learn, and I'm going to introduce you the fabulous panelists that we got today for this panel. But before I want to know more or less, so we know who we're talking to, how many of you come from city staff, more or less? How many of you are from advocates or non-profit organizations? And how many of you from businesses? Thank you, Aria, you're on my table. It's the first time here, welcome. Uh, who else is missing? Which other people who are not business or city? Yes? From the public, awesome! How many people from the public? Thank you for being here, you're also advocates. Okay, great, so we know who we have in the room. All right, so let me go back to my job. <laughs> My panelists, and this is in, um, in order, in alphabetic order, so nobody gets mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, and please come here as, as I call you. Okay. okay, please welcome Beth Martin. Okay. <laughs> Beth is a senior planner 
for after planning and design in the open office. That works with jurisdictions across the Bay Area to help plan for the benefits of active transportation while addressing the unique needs of different types of people. Bay is interested in working with cities to build new models of collaboration and power sharing with community members throughout planning processes. Thank you, Ben, for being with us. Next, Clarissa Tavansaka. Welcome, Clarissa. Clarissa is the new Mobility Policy Director at Transform, which is an advocacy organization statewide. Um, in her work, her efforts are to ensure disadvantaged communities benefit from bike pedestrian infrastructure and technology-enabled shared mobility options. She co-authored Transform's framework for equity in new mobility. And by the way, I'm using that framework for some work in my professional work with Real Alternatives, so thank you so much for putting it out there. Okay. Um, she's also the regional advocate to prioritize the needs of low income communities in various transportation projects across the Bay Area. Welcome, Felice. Next. <laughs> Manuel Corona. Manuel, welcome. <laughs> Manuel is the transportation planner of the Oakland Department of Transportation in the planning and project development team. Manuel was, Manuel was hired in 2019, uh, so just recently, <laughs> but he's been busy since then, uh, and has worked on Les Bike Oakland and the City Master Bike Plan Update and grant development programs for um, transportation, um, such as the Pedestrian Plaza in Fruitvale, and he was the logistical coordinator of Paint the Town. This was a community led street mural pilot, a program that brings Playfulness and community ownership throughout Oakland. That was very nice. Welcome, mm -hmm. Manuel. <laughs> Next, we have Marquita Price. Welcome, Marquita. <laughs> she has an impressive bio. She is a third generation East Oakland native, has a background in technology, business processes, chemistry, math, and community organizing and development. Uh, Marquita's awareness of urban planning is mostly due to the observation of her own black new experience in the hood. Marquita received an, a, various achievements and awards. I'm very, very proud to introduce all of this because I was very impressed. Uh, one from the completion of the Center for Educational Partnership is, is UC Berkeley. Um, she also received a recognition from the state of California, both the Legislative Assembly and the Senate and the Alameda County Board of Supervisors for her efforts on the Tobacco Less Club in Merritt College. Very impressive. Welcome, Marquita. I'm sorry, this seems long, but they put all of these great people in this panel, so I have to leave them all. Okay, the last one. Welcome, Phoenix Magnum, please join us. is the educator and collective member of Cycles of Change, another of the nonprofit organizations who participated, and community organizations who participated in the plan. He's been seven years working as educator. He's a long time resident of Oakland, and he has been an educator of all levels, since preschool to graduate school. He's also the commissioner of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission of Oakland. Welcome, members. <laughs> So this is how it's going to be. Uh, as you can see, one of the interesting things of the, this equity-focused plan was that they work together, the city and the community organization. So we're going to hear from everybody. We're going to start with Manuel, who's going to tell us about how the city embraces study this plan, how they carry on. And then we're going to hear from the organizations, the community organizations that Marquita and Magnus represent. And we're also going to hear from Clarice, from an advocate organization about how they help on the coalition building. And at last, we're going to hear from Beth, who was the consulting company, who she participated in the consultant company for uh, helping the city to realize the plan. All right, so, and I'm going to take time, very strict with time, we had to finish before talking. Uh, okay, Manuel, take it. Thank you for the introduction. I'm gonna briefly go through our plan. I'm gonna to try to touch our process, the 
collaboration that we did with community partners and some of the implementation, and as well as the programs that came out of it and the recommendations of the network. So. We, we had a new approach in this planning process where we started with a representative survey, which was significantly significant, and so we could really capture what biking was uh, happening in Oakland, which is different than what we get off of the census. And then we developed uh, an equity framework working with our Department of Race and Equity to ensure that our engagement plan was inclusive and that we weren't missing any pieces and not capturing voices that are usually not in the planning process. From there, we developed new engagement strategies, which uh, worked on, which was where we worked with community-based organizations, and also uh, developed our, our workshops and mobile outreach to meet people where they're already going, instead of creating barriers and having them come to us. We were meeting them and their locations on the weekends and evenings. And lastly, we had other engagement strategies, which was like not just the in-person stuff, but developing a web tool where everybody was able to put in their input, upvote, downvote, and comment on different things that we were all talking about together as openers. From there, these are our four um, goals that we did. We were working on access, affordability, health and safety, and collaboration. And then from those mobile workshops that we did 60 out of there, we engaged 3,600 3, people, uh, spent about 560, 76 hours in the community, and collected over 2,600 uh, comments on our online website. A little bit of our process, we, we split it up in three sections. So we started off by listening, then we moved on to col uh, collaboration, and then we refined it. In our first session, we did a representative survey like I spoke before. We also did mobile workshops and listening sessions. And this is where we really uh, held on to our community partners and they facilitated conversations. We were able to sit and listen to the needs and uh, wants from the community towards biking and, and what was really reflected. And that was where we based a lot of our strategies moving forward. From that, we learned, from the significantly significant survey, we learned that about 20% of people are, are, are typically riding a bike to not just commute, but to get to work in other places. This is different than what the census says, which is at 3%. Um, we, also, we also heard that enforcement, policing enforcement was a big topic, and that we needed a more transparent process, and that we needed to support existing bicycle cultures. From there, we did, a, this is our second one, collaboration, where we uh, did design lab, where we went out and we worked with community to vet not only the, uh, the programs and recommendations that we pulled out, but really understand what they wanted their cities to look like, what they wanted their streets to look like around their neighborhood. From there, we, we ground truths in and the refined in. So we, we put the network up online to understand if this is resonating with the community members, and then we, we worked with the scraper bike team and cycles to do community bike rides where he went out and actually drove some of the recommendations that we had to see if it, it really worked and to see if what other issues were to pop out if this was to be implemented. From there, we built a new bicycle network that was based on being comfortable, being local, and being connected. So the first strategy is making it comfortable through the survey. We learned that the majority of people feel most comfortable on a major thoroughfare in a separated bikeway. From that, we, we try to build out what, what do the low stress networks look like to make it comfortable for all ages and abilities. In the small bubble, we can see what the current reality is, where there's only, if we look at Central East Oakland, there's only 70% of low stress network out there. And if the whole network was to be built out, that would come out to 99%. And as a caveat, our low stress net network is a buffer bike lane or better. Uh, that's how we categorize it, so anything that was uh, more removed from traffic by the mile. So from here, we, we can look at the existing build network, what we're proposing to upgrade, and ultimately, if uh, we're trying to build a more uh, comfortable network, uh, is building out more of those neighborhood bike routes, which is also known as a bicycle boulevard, so we can really see how we shifted into those kind of modes more. Next, we did uh, was make it local. So 
through our outreach, we really learned that program programmatic uh, infrastructure is more important than just ground infrastructure. So somewhere we we are promoting more homegrown efforts, uh, provide shared resources, and support the local bike economy. So working with existing bicycle culture, building out more uh, local bicycle shops in areas that don't have them, and working with uh, the Oakland Public Library to build community bike hubs. And our second strategy, again, to make it local. So a lot of what we were doing was to try to see how, how quickly people could get uh, within a low stress network to places like schools, libraries, recreation centers. We also looked at grocery stores and transit hubs and major uh, job centers. And then our third strategy was to make it connected. So not only were we looking to see um, if we could get to local destinations, but how can we get across the whole city and connect to other places such as San Leandro, Berkeley, and Emmyville. So these are the major growth that can get us there through low uh, stress networks. From there, um, we're thinking about implementation. So now that we, we know this robust uh, network and how we want to build it, we're, we're thinking about how, how can this be implemented, right? So we looked at our high injury network, we looked at where, where there's gaps in our network and how to make it together, what, what connections we were making to destinations, and we looked at our paving plan that just came out and see what, how does that align, and we use an equity focus on that as well to determine what projects we are going to work on first. And in this map, what it shows currently is on the map, uh, on the graph, on the on your left, the lower pink is showing the share of disadvantaged communities presented, and then the darker pink is showing the existing the existing bike infrastructure in those neighborhoods. And we're really focused on equity. So on the on the right hand side, we can see the share of disadvantage in in the pink. And you can see that the built-up proposed bicycle network aligns with that. Primarily, you can see it in the East Lake Fruitvale neighborhood and the Central East Oakland, where we're trying to build up there. And thank you, that's it for me. <laughs> if you have questions, just start writing them on the little knock stick, uh, knock sticks or no cards. No cards, thank you. <laughs> and then we will have um, time for questions and, and answers at the end. Uh, then it's Clarissa, I think that I believe we wanted to have you introduce the efforts of all the um, community-based organizations and what was the role of Transform. Please. Hey, everyone. Um, so I think many of you know about the work that we had been doing alongside Silicon Valley Bike Coalition, SF Bike Coalition, and other grassroots groups on bike share. And so when um, the city was going through its update of the bike plan, we were basically on the heels of having done a lot of deep work, um, deep outreach on bike share in Oakland. Um, and so we saw the opportunity to not just um, have new bikes on the ground, but to figure out what the infrastructure need is, especially in our black and brown communities. Um, I think as cities, uh, today are changing. We, we see a lot of more affluent people coming to our urban centers. One of the big challenges people have, our cities have, is this question of um, who are we planning for, right? We're building luxury condos and such, um, and transportation bike infrastructure, but are they for just the newcomers? That was our challenge, particularly on this bike plan that the city approached us with. Can we do bike planning and really hit this question on the head, um, will bike planning gentrify our black and brown communities? Um, as someone who is maybe three, a third generation San Franciscan, a uh, person of color that bikes, I will tell you that my community wants to bike. We want safe places to bike and walk. So it's not a question of whether um, bike infrastructure will help us, but the reality that we often are not at the table when it comes to the planning process particularly because of a um, space of advocacy that um, a lot of us are not necessarily aware of. And so you will hear from today um, Cycles of Change and East Oakland Collective, groups that are really deeply in the community providing social services and um, bike education, for example, um, but they're not necessarily attuned to the planning process and how to kind of communicate the needs of the people that they serve to people like uh, Manuel here at the table, right? 
And so transform, um, knowing this, was very interesting in figuring out how do we build on that momentum from the bike share equity work, um, and not just say that we're, we're one and done and done equity with biking, but let's take that momentum and talk now about the other barriers to biking in our communities. Mm -hmm. So we played a kind of coordinating role um, to distribute some of the grants to the CBOs that participated by um, boards were contracted to work on this bike plan. And we, we really focused on getting them to um, leverage their strengths. So we saw some images of community bike rides, which I don't think are part a part of normal bike planning processes, and uh, thank you, Beth, for, for that information. But it's something that our community is strong in. Um, we know that um, people feel really connected when they're out on their bikes and talking about the actual streets that uh, the planners in the city want to do road diets on or protect bikeways, et cetera. So you'll see just like a different flavor of how we brought the strengths of the community to a planning process that normally is more an engineering exercise. Um, oftentimes people on, um, and I, I'm not the bike planner, but on Google Street View and CAD, I'm assuming the different technical <laughs> tools. Um, and so to be on the ground, actually hearing from the community, the history of how they've been impacted by transportation infrastructure in ways that have displaced them, have raised their homes, for example. Like I remember we did a bike ride in West Oakland and we talked about um, BART coming in and decimating West Oakland. That was a real moment for the city and the community to say like, hey, we've done things wrong. So a lot of this process has been an effort of recognizing how planning has done wrong by the community and understanding that um, there is that um, new space to actually build some trust. Um, and it comes from this kind of extension of conversations in the community. So I will say as a planner, um, we often want input from the community, but um, a lot of times that feels extractionary. So a lot of what we did here was relationship build and trust build. And not to say that we're fully there yet, but I think we've done um, above and beyond what we kind of expected. We are coming into this like worry that we wouldn't come out with a good product. So, I Great, thank you, Elisa. Uh, later, then we're going to hear from Finnish Magnum. Uh, he's a letter teacher from San Jose Good morning, everybody. I don't have to do a sale pitch to this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Since everybody here is avid bike riders. Um, cycle change has been in, in existence for the last 21 years. Wow. And uh, we began by doing bike clubs, after school programs, our middle schools, and those programs center around bike mechanics, helping kids learn how to do fixed bikes, <clears throat> as well as group rides. So they do a little bit of that each, for each class. And um, so they learn to use the infrastructure that the plan has developed and, uh, safely and uh, hopefully get the bug to ride their bikes uh, forever. And I'm, I'm using the coaster board for some of that. I'm, I'll be 78 years, old, years this year. And so I say, hey, you got to ride as long, at least as long as me. <laughs> To, to doing safe routes to school. I think most of you are familiar with that. And over the years, we've done, gee, we average about 12,000 students a year in that program. And we do that all over Alameda County, in, including, well, we're not in Fremont, uh, Union City, York, and, um, and uh, Hayward, San Angelo, Oakland. So, uh, so we average about uh, from middle schools and high schools, we average about roughly about 12,000 kids a year. Then we have an adult program, which I do a lot of work in, called Upcycle. And over the last seven, eight years, we've given away about 1,000 bikes to adults who want to use bikes for transportation, commuting, um, for group riding, social reasons, and for health reasons. And, um, uh, and we, at this point, we with the, well, let me just continue. 
And then we also have what we call early life. So kids who are not part of our, our um, app, uh, build life program, they come to the bike shop, spend three or four weeks learning how to uh, deconstruct the bike, and put it back together again, and then ride along with it. And we have, we have a similar program for adults who want to learn how to do bike mechanics, build a bike, and then either leave it with us or ride off with it. And um, so that's that's most of them. Then we have a we have a we have a program just for young uh, females, female body persons. So that's about a four or five week program during the summer. I think that one just finished. Um, so this is what we've been doing for the last twenty one years. Now let me just come back to how did we get involved with updating this master bike ride? In 2007, uh, the city came, called us up and said, hey, come on down and talk to us about helping us develop the bike plan. And they, three of our staff, we went down there, spent roughly about a half hour, 40 minutes. They asked us a few questions. They said, well, thank you. And guess what? They showed up 10 years later. <laughs> 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 hey guys, let's do it one more time. <laughs> and we were extremely distrustful and skeptical. And to be honest with you, I was one of the bigger ones. I think that Chris will tell you that um, I was one of those who was saying, who is this stuff for? Because Oakland is going through, like most places, a gentrification process and a dismissive process. And when I moved to Oakland in 1981, Oakland was roughly 50% black. Today is 25%. And headed towards single digits. Okay? So when, when, uh, when, well, Beth wasn't here, but, uh, <laughs> when Jeff, our boss, was, was part of that group, and he was showing us all these nice, uh, shiny, uh, white lines with these bike lanes, and, and so we said, Jeff, and, uh, uh, who is this for? You know, and um, and so the process of building trust began at that point in time between Alta, Transform, and the city staff. Uh, and that 2007, Oakland didn't have any public transportation as it had two years ago. And um, I'm happy to say that people we've been working with uh, have been. It's, uh, all due respect to all the people, all, pl all the planners and engineers. <laughs> the young, uh, younger people like, 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 uh, like Emmanuel over here, um, who is a little bit better connected to the community. They live in the community. And um, we see them shopping. We sometimes see them at the same restaurants we eat at. Um, and uh, their stakeholders in the same way that key to our stakeholders. And so when we began to engage each other, they said, well, we're going to listen. And we're going to hear you. And if you look, look at our plan, you'll see where ELC, Scraper Bike, um, and, uh, and Cycle Chain, you'll see us in that plan. So we did two, well, three things. One is that we were engaged, we were asked to bring our community together with, with, uh, for what, we, what they were calling a listening session. And our community includes homeless people, uh, low opportunity folks. Um, uh, who else is there? Huh? Youth, yeah, we had some youth there. Um, did, I, did you remember that? No? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a time? No, it's okay. The story, finish the story. Okay, yeah, well, anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah. Okay, anyway, so we did the listening session, and, uh, and they took uh, a lot of notes. And then they, and I said, hey, send it back to us. And they sent the notes back almost verbatim as we had said. The second part is that um, they contracted us to do a feedback session. After we put the draft together, this thing together, they said, look it over and make sure that we didn't miss anything. Make sure you're in there. And so we combed through that thing <laughs> and come up with about uh, maybe 13 or 14 page uh, presentation. And guess what? We were in there. Okay? And we're at the point now where, where the city council has adopted this plan, and uh, we're at the point of implementation. And uh, now we're looking at the city for our grant money. <laughs> 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 so we can continue with our program. Thank you.
who is an urban and regional planning officer of the East Oakland Collective, who also was part of this process. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, how y'all doing? Our CEO and our community engagement person. 
And so we're all, we only have two and a half staff, so we collaborate with a lot of coalitions. We believe in breaking the silos. We're only two, two and a half, three years old, so we, we partner a lot in collaborations. And so the, East, the Black Poetry Zone is a collaboration of uh, partners in East Oakland who's looking to create uh, a, a geographic area that has economic ties that, that culturally re represents us. You have Chinatown, you have Koreatown, you have Fruitvale, if you don't know, it's kind of like Central American kind of of area where the streetscaping and everything culturally represents them, the business, the business retail. And right now in Oakland, we don't have really, we don't have that space for us, but we can just unapologetically be us. If you go to the lake, we get called on for barbecue. We sell lemonade, we get called for no permits. And just the story goes on. And so this area and zone, we don't want to just do what we want, but we want to at least make it to where socially, whoever comes here, everybody's welcome. But if you interact here, you know that this is where 